Pretty close. Yeah, Pretty very close. nice. So uh, thank you guys for being here. So we're here uh, just to get to, to know you guys a little bit in terms of uh, when you got started playing. You guys started out, what, jazz band, high school kind of vibes? Me and Tim uh, went to the same high school and our musical playing goes back the furthest. Uh, we were 16, this was 1986, mm. that's 31 years ago. Um, and uh, we, it was just a cover band. It was called the Eds, and we played. Uh, the alternative of the time was like you know REM and the Cure and mm -hmm. like college rock. So that's what we played. And then we started doing originals. Mm -hmm. um, and then the the 311 sound was really born. Like I knew Chad from the the jazz band. Mm -hmm. Chad and I played in the jazz band. And then when the three of us got together and formed Unity. Um, in the middle of 1988, that's mm -hmm. when like the 311 sound was probably yeah. born with the funk and the reggae yeah. and the super high energy kind of stuff that it was, we were just like, okay, we got something yeah. here. Gotta, so like even before that, when you started playing guitar, did you come to it from any other instruments or did you just go straight to guitar? Tromboner. Yeah, 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 I started on trombone. Nice. Um, and that was uh, fourth grade or third grade mm -hmm. to start, something like that. So that's where I learned to read bass clef, mm -hmm. single note stuff, which didn't really help on guitar. But yeah, <laughs> and uh, you know, end of junior high, maybe switched to mm -hmm. guitar. Just could play some, some of the music that I was listening to. Yeah. Didn't, not too much of it had trombone. And Although so, I did love trombone. Yeah. I do, still do. Well, what, was, what were those first players or those first tunes that were like, I, I, I gotta get a guitar, like I gotta start playing. Well, I started on piano when I was five and then when I was 12, I got my first guitar and the first song I ever learned was Margaritaville by Jimmy Buffett. Nice. You know, pretty, <laughs> two, maybe three chords. Good time. Yeah, um, Yeah, it's a weird song for a 12 year old to learn. <laughs> um, and But then, you know, when I heard The Clash, that yeah. everything changed for me. Um, yeah. It was just such an explosion in my frontal lobe to hear that power and mm -hmm. rebellion and just attitude and yeah and music and then you know the also the clash had kind of no limits within their music they mm -hmm. would put reggae with punk and then they got into early hip hop mm -hmm. and funk and latin and samba i mean every yeah. style so dub yeah, yeah like so much great different reggae styles came out of them and ska um so we've always yeah. liked that ethic of like anything goes in music mm -hmm. there are no rules we're not a purist band we like to just keep broadening our horizons mm -hmm. so those are some of the the inspiration yeah and so like so bennett berman on instagram and jackson ward on instagram they both wanted to know how long did it take for you guys to solidify what what that 311 sound was did it just click instantly and, and that was it it was really sloppy in the beginning, like <laughs> yeah, when we were in Unity. Evolving. Yeah, yeah, we just played with so much energy uh, that, but we what it wasn't like as synced up. And mm -hmm. I always knew, even before we ever went on tour, once we get on tour, that's when we're really gonna elevate because yeah. just playing night after night, you know, we all I focus it. A yeah, bit better. we all moved out here as a band, and so that was a focusing thing in mm -hmm. 1992. But then once we got on tour, after our record came out in 93, then like that was the real You just get those reps first. in night after night, you playing, it. getting tighter. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's cool. So, you gotta um, put in your 10,000 hours, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's the it's rule. It's still kind of yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, well, we just like we take time off and yeah, come like, back. Yeah, the end of the summer, what mm -hmm. we just played will sound. So like with, yeah. with, um, with your guys' reggae influence, there's a lot of players, especially beginning guitarists, who are trying to do like the chop, the offbeat chop. You guys have any like tips or tricks on 
tightening that up or can you show us like That's how different. how you do it right right yeah cuz um, a lot of I don't know. have a reggae sound going but like for me I used to play like you know up like you see people yeah. but then I can make it more percussive it, mm -hmm. and it's a super fast hammer like like on and off as quick as you can yeah. that's right. kind of what I work you want to kind of lift a little bit on your hand your mm -hmm. left hand too you know. so you're just kind of like pinching while you hit it yeah just the yeah. fastest yeah. hammering yeah because yeah. yeah, sometimes you might want to be like or you know depending <laughs> on the song and the yeah. tempo yeah. too like oh, how yeah. how you know percussive All and quick you want it tiny minor little changes you yeah. make yeah but once again it's like repetition and just playing it mm -hmm. playing along with reggae records so so johnny chrisman wants to know and this may be related to coming to la in 92 was there ever a time as a band where you guys were dead broke yeah yeah <laughs> and then yeah. and then how did you get past that well you, you eat top ramen mm -hmm. you know that's like you get like six packs for 99 cents yeah. at Ralph's right here at the Rock and Roll <laughs> Ralph's. Because um, I, I, I used lived to live right, right here there. and I worked at this guitar center. Very cool. Um, and I bought this guitar at Guitar Center. Um, but I can tell more about that later. But yeah, we were on a real shoestring budget from when we all moved out here. We just packed up all our stuff and let's say we had a, a Monte Carlo old beat up Chad's car that basically failed once it got here mm. but it did get us out here from Regal or yeah, oh, was it Regal Re yeah, Regal, or Regal. <laughs> that was it and then Tim had his Volkswagen van that was like our cargo mm. hold and it was all you know with dead head sticker and just like Half total gear. cop magnet but uh, <laughs> never <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah we were you know we didn't have jobs mm. and so it was there was kind of, we just had faith that something was going to work out. And though it seemed a long time, it really, we got a record deal and put our record out within a little over a year of when we got here. So it was actually really fast. But mm -hmm. at the time, we're like, when would these lawyers call us back with a contract? Like, <laughs> um, but you know, it, it, we just had, it was such a solidarity mm -hmm. building thing to, to be together. and try and grow our own marijuana and fail miserably at a little <laughs> house in, in Van Nuys. But we, we were really broke, but then everything kind of just worked out and we mm -hmm. got our first budget and bought some new guitars and went on tour. Nice. And so you said you guys have been making music together 31 years. Over that time, like what have you learned about uh, each other or maybe even learned from each other in, in your different styles of, of guitar playing? I've learned jazz chords from Nick's <laughs> songs. So all those kind of different chords. I've learned a lot of chords over the years. Yeah, I, I, I believe in always remaining teachable. And, you know, I t took guitar lessons very recently just mm -hmm. because I, there was gaps. And I knew I didn't, there were certain chords I didn't know that I, I couldn't play every scale in every position. So yeah. I guess I went through this kind of you know, learning phase, and then I would write these weird things with new chords and teaching with Tim. But for me, I, when people ask me my influences, your biggest influence in any band is going to be your bandmates. Mm -hmm. Tim is my biggest influence as a guitarist, and that's just how, you know how it is. Of yeah. course, we can name outside people that we we grew up on stuff, but like right, it's kind of locked in. Yeah, yeah. With these guys. Well, like it's for example, in the song "Lose." I've seen live, you, you'll play the first half of the solo and you'll play the second half of the solo. That's how it was written originally? Yeah. And so, like, could you guys maybe just give me just a quick, like, breakdown? Just a, uh, just a quick breakdown of, like, oh, well, I wrote, you know, this little part, and this is how I had laid on the chords or something, you know what I well, mean? Well, you know, we were talking about the, uh, the, the jazz band that I was in, and this was actually... This is a chord progression from one of those jazz songs that I played with Chad. I don't remember the title, but yeah. I, I got to go back and tell my uh, the, the the band teacher, like, mm -hmm. hey, remember that one song? It was yeah. like this. I was like, I used it for a three lines. So. <laughs> um, but then, it, and then when it came to the solo, I I, well, I don't really call it a solo as much as a lead. And then I kind of play that set thing and then mm -hmm. just like took the first four bars and then I 
said Tim, mm -hmm. go nuts for the next 12 or 16, and that's when he really shreds. Like, I've always, you know, played a little bit more simple, mm. more rhythm side of things, and then, you know, give Tim time to, to shine and shred out. Kind of stretch out a little bit. Notes. Yeah. <laughs> couple extra notes because I remember when we first moved here we were all in that little house in Van Nuys the rest of us a lot of times would be hanging out playing basketball and Tim would be in his room playing along to Grateful Dead records mm. and that's when he really You're like ballooned. shut up <laughs> <laughs> no, he'd be like, Can you guys leave I've got it <laughs> yeah so that was I really remember that was the time when he mm -hmm. really kind of bloomed as what a player did, what did you pick up from from the Grateful Dead um, mm -hmm. Well, they're fun to just kind of play and be the, an additional member in there, mm -hmm. kind of jamming along with what they're doing, you know. But yeah. um, uh, I really like Jerry Garcia, and I, I, you know, I don't know if he, his leads and the soloing that he does and stuff like that. Yeah. And so, and then also just the, everything about that band is just a little bit kind of unique, mm -hmm. you know. So whether it's the rhythms or... Bob something Weir, about that. some people like you know it's just great so yeah. I, but it it's um for improvisation or just kind of listening to yourself and the notes you're playing along mm -hmm. in the, the context of other music under there you know mm -hmm. or a chord change or something yeah. so but he had such a great tone you know like and mm -hmm. then that when he would solo with the tiwa or the envelope yeah. filter and yeah we kind of took that and also those like kind of pull offs or where he, he yeah. hits every note, Trilly. the chromatic yeah. trills and stuff like mm -hmm. that. It's, yeah, he's it's got the one best the envelope filter sound. Just oh, yeah. the I'm best. The exact one. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't work Tim quite the Jerry same as his. Yeah. Uh, man, his yeah. He's, and and what is that? Do we know the secret? It's a Mutron oh. three. Yeah, but he, you know, I wouldn't be the one probably to say exactly. But he, you know, just the way his guitar is. Um, Wired with the effects, mm -hmm. coming back to it so he could adjust some things on nice. it. But he really could dial it nice. I mean, a lot of people, I guess there's others too. But mm -hmm. he's and so when you guys wrote a song like Beautiful Disaster with that dual lead guitar part, did that come about because you were like messing around with a harmony pedal or did you guys write it as like, let's let's do this lead together? Oh, wrote that. You know, the Beautiful Disaster was the first song written for a transistor. And I, I think when each record comes out you go through this sort of refraction period of where you just don't know what to write next like I haven't been writing lately and so like maybe in about two or three months I'll be like okay now I know what I want to start on writing the next album mm -hmm. but um, I was kind of having a block during the blue album I didn't know what I wanted to write and then that was the first song that came out and I had been listening to a ton of no effects mm. and we toured a lot with the band The Urge and The Urge always started their songs with like these dual or triple harmony horn leads yeah. so and so i was like you know what we can do that with guitar and that just wasn't a common thing to have dual leads yeah um in in, in our era of music and you know the mm -hmm. modern rock of the 90s although of course you go back to thin lizzy iron maiden oh, yeah. you know there that was a big thing in the late 70s early 80s but it, it really went away mm -hmm. and after hearing cool bands like The Urge yeah. was a ska band with horns I was like god we could make a really catchy melody and start out the song with mm -hmm. it and that that was really the first one and now it's become kind of a staple of course that wildfire riff yeah. that we started out with that was like an example mm -hmm. and usually just takes just working it out like mm -hmm. play, so it, play it on a tape recorder and then play it again and find the harmonies yeah so when you're at that position, where are you? I'm up, usually. He always plays the higher one. It's a little, oh, yeah. It cuts through a little more. I got the extra, not wildfire. There is one, a couple of them where I got to use this high E. Oh, yeah. He has 24 the 24 frets. I got 24, yeah. typically. Yeah. Unless I'm on it, yeah. And then sometimes I, when I don't have that, I kind of forget till nice. I get up there. But um, <laughs> Let's see. Geoman Bedoya uh, is interested in knowing uh, what advice would you give to a band that's trying to find its own sound? Oh, uh, well, you got to play what you enjoy playing. You know what I mean, and mm -hmm. and a lot of it's the people you play with too. So, um, you know, whether it's Nick or our drummer Chad or anybody in the band. But um, yeah, I mean, we just I think it develops over time. Mm -hmm. So we have to spend more time playing 
you know, when you first start, like the very first song I ever wrote after I finished, I realized that it was, we mentioned Jim Croce before this was filming. I remember, after I wrote it, I realized that it was pretty much that exact Jim Croce song with like one word mm. different, but I was like six years old. So all you're doing at first is imitating people. Mm -hmm. And then as you go along, you find your voice. Mm. Um, so you, you really got to go through that. And I guess that means going into your own weirdness. Yeah. Let you, be as weird as you can be. Let your freak flag fly. Mm. That's the way to find your sound. Because if, if, you're, if you don't have courage, you're going to stay within the, the box of what is safe and what people are already accepting. But people only really relate if they hear your unique spirit mm. in it. So that's, at some point, you know, that's, you'll find your own voice if mm. you keep playing. It's, it comes from repetition. Nice. And so you guys, have, you, you guys have mentioned that it's important to play with other people and put in the time. Is there something that you find universal that makes a good collaborator? Why? You might be able to answer that. I, I mean, you, you got to have... See, people ask, why, does, why did 311 last so long? It's because we realize that we have something special and that we're better together than we could be apart. Mm -hmm. So you have to be flexible. You have to be ready to not get your way. I mm -hmm. mean, we're coming... Tomorrow is our 27-year anniversary wow. as a band. So, I mean, that's so rare. Of course, mm -hmm. U2 has got us beat, same four guys for yeah. longer. But other than that, from our 90s era, there's pretty much no bands yeah. that... Uh, have the exact same lineup. So I think it just comes from realizing that we have something special and being ready to compromise and uh, and listening instead of just, mm. just talking. You gotta listen. Cool. And so like the new album, it's called Mosaic. It's coming out the 23rd of this month. Mm -hmm. Correct. And um, Eric Udall on Facebook. Uh, Eric. He, uh, <laughs> he wants to know, Tim, uh, which uh, PRS guitars did you use? Uh, in making the new record, uh, the new record. Uh, let's see. We use this one, and this um, is a this is a just a custom twenty four with a piece of koa wood top. Nice. And so we use that one. And that custom tiki inlay. Yeah, custom tiki inlay in there. Bob Vessels, mm. old friend, haven't seen forever, but he is designed that. Your tattoo that. artist. Tattoo artist Bob. Yeah, Bob cool. Vessels. And um, so yeah, this is my most recent one. Mm -hmm. But we use this and. Um, you know, we have a couple other guitars, like uh, my old red one. It's just yeah. an old, what they call a standard. Oh, cool. It's a standard 24. It's like from the nine, old. And, and this guitar, you bought here? I bought this guitar here. Um, While you were working here? No. Okay. No, this was... Years later. I could not afford this guitar <laughs> when I first moved out here. I was 17. Hmm. Um, but, uh, you know, they have a, a good, really good vintage. And... Uh, section in here and this guitar is 1970 so it's not as collectible mm. as something that was like 68 or 69 but for me I like having a guitar that I know is my exact same age born in 70 just like That's me nice. um, and uh, you know this walnut I always like natural woods mm -hmm. so I always have like sunbursts and stuff and this walnut is basically as natural of a finish as calm yeah as, can, as you can get so that is awesome what is that a 355 is that 335 35 yeah. Interesting. Oh, you're just such a tall dude. Did you put this like on it or was guitar? it on it when no, you got it, it, it? I like getting guitars that came with a Bigsby because if, if you would put it on, then it would have more hardware here. Like it, the stop tail would be right here and then you're always left with those two posts. Mm. So this is a factory installed Bigsby so then you don't have the extra post yeah. there. You know that it's it's lived with the Bigsby for a really long time because you know that can put you out of tune. So you got to find one that, that stays in tune mm -hmm. on its own. And I think it was about 10 years ago that I really needed a Bigsby. I like mm -hmm. in the early days I always thought of like, you know, kind of metal guitars having whammy bars that do, you know, octave yeah. dive bombs and stuff. But for me, I always just like having just a nice just you don't need to go an octave. Just yeah. this only as far as it can go is like a whole step. Yeah. You know? Those go up too? Yeah, it goes up too. It's more of a surfy thing. Yeah. Basically, Gretches were known for them at first. <laughs> um, so that kind of became my thing. And yeah. So I went around and had to, to just get only guitars with big speed. Give the note a little personality, a little wiggle. Yeah, to especially it. when you got a surfy reverb. Like, mm. that's, it can really express yourself. That's cool. So, like, in writing, in writing the new record, did you guys try anything different or weird in the writing process? Or 
you know, how how is the is the normal writing process for you? Like, is there a seed to a song that's always the same seed? Songs can start any different ways. Sometimes it can be like a, a cool title um, that like too much to think. I'm mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, that ha that that has a story behind it right mm -hmm. there because it's kind of a play on words. People are used to saying too much to drink, but then too much to think. Like, ah, oh, there's just too much on my mind. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to have a relief. I want to have a release. I want to get high mm -hmm. as the chorus goes. So um, that song kind of wrote itself from the title. More songs probably come from an instrumental. Um, you know, like Tim had this. Uh, what was your original title for Face in the Wind? It was something, uh, something about vape. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, vaped potato. Vaped potato. <laughs> Just like, you know, baked potato, the yeah. classic club here that we yeah. used to go to. Um, and so he, he submitted that, mm -hmm. you know, sent me a, an MP3 of that instrumental and I could, and I just start doing a mumble, which is where you just start singing, blah, 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 mm. you know, kind of making words, but not really. And yeah. the same whether it's a, either a rap or a vocal, you just start with a mumble and you got to try and record it mm. and get that down. And then you start inserting words. Sometimes words just drop out of the sky, yeah. out of the mumble. Um, and then maybe we'd probably go and like change the roadmap a little bit to mm. give it a b bit more of like, in case it's kind of losing the excitement, excitement to come in with a more exciting part or whatever. But we try to be as, as weird as possible. I mean, you take a different songs like the two we're kind of going to play today, a little wildfire, a little too late. There's like not any repetition in some of those songs. Mm -hmm. It's like bridge, bridge, bridge. You know what I mean? Like you don't yeah. have to necessarily go verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, chorus, which is the most classic. Yeah. You know, you can just keep going into new areas, and that's that's what's fun to do is just mess with what people are expecting. Mm. And so, uh, f f for the melody, the mumble can help bring in either what the words are, or how the melody goes. Do you ever sing solos before you would play them? Yeah, when writing them. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know. Um, yeah, like for Wildfire, I was like, do 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 do. You know, just singing it first, and then I find it on guitar. Is that because your brain can more freely move around than your hands when you're? Yeah, doing that? and I think that's why I really started working on my playing about six or seven years ago because I realized that my hands couldn't keep up mm. with what I was thinking, and so and that just comes from putting in the mm -hmm. time and get your muscles ready. Yeah. So I can improvise either vocally or. For guitar, but not on keyboards anymore. I'm right. And a lot of times you just hear it, you know, like you yeah. probably hear that melody over the top of it yeah. going in your head. And so, uh, uh, Mr. PlayStation 200 on Instagram, uh, he, he wants Lost to know. Handle, bro. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, what tips do you have for writing the lyrics, for actually filling up that mumble with, with some real words? Um. You know, I I actually said this in a song like singing to my voicemail trying to get it down because ideas drop out of the sky and it was used to be really hard to before smartphones so yeah. I would actually call my voicemail and like do say a rap or say a lyric idea or sing a mm -hmm. little melody because I'd be out and about and I'd have to go to a payphone because I didn't have any kind of recorder so um, but now yeah I basically just keep my keep my phone there and. Little, I'll see, hear a little phrase like in a movie or something. I'll be like, ah, oh, that's that's cool, and just just type it into the notes mm -hmm. on my phone, or use the little voice memo if there's a melody. So you gotta. It's it's both from spontaneous inspiration, but then sometimes you really gotta sit down and like turn everything off and just focus mm -hmm. on a blank. Perspiration. Pad. Yeah. You got the inspiration, yeah. then the perspiration. Nice. So now we're going to get into, this is the lightning round of questions that came in off the internets. Um, Let's go lightning. So, uh, so Steve Krauss uh, wants to know, what or who are you guys listening to these days? Hmm. You first. You, me first. Um, I, I mean, Nick's more up on the modern kind of <laughs> tip, but I, you know, I listen to a lot of guitar style stuff, but yeah. also a lot of reggae, a lot of old roots reggae. But I love No Effects. I love no, I love Bad Brains. Um, a lot of Fish, yeah. you know. But um, as far as like a modern, brand new record that came out, 
it takes me time. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit behind the times when it comes to that. But yeah. I love. I got to plug Volto. Mm. They're a great band. John Ziegler, our friend, cool. one Curry. of our greatest guitar players we have, and. Um, so everything from fusion to mm -hmm. kind of jam band to metal to reggae to country to, to that, all over the yeah. place. Didn't help, did it? No, it wasn't very fast wasn't either. Yeah. Uh, you Shoot, know, when I heard lightning. Twenty One Pilots a couple of years ago, I was like, "Oh, wait, this is a this is a good band." And mm -hmm. I realized later they had a little bit of a in influence from us. So mm -hmm. it's cool to hear a, a younger generation. Um, I like electronic music, but then I also love going having like Apple Music integration into my phone and when I'm driving I can just be like play Skylarking by XTC and yeah. it comes on that fast because there's so many songs in the memory bank and yeah. to be able to just say any song and hear it. Yeah. So I've been having a lot of like retro stuff of hearing stuff from like the mid 80s mm -hmm. which was the alternative that, that we first loved so much. Awesome. Mike, Michael Hilton from Facebook. Uh, who are your favorite guitar players under 30 if any? You know, I got to give a shout out to Mahali from Twiddle because he's great. He's really great. If you don't know Twiddle, check him out. Pretty cool. good band, but awesome. Man, I wonder. If, you know, there's a lot of awesome players out there for sure. Yeah, I'll just say all of them. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's all let's all keep playing. Uh, Karen Kalensky from Instagram. Uh, what is your favorite song off of your least favorite album? I guess she means try 311. I think she does, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't have a uh, least yeah. favorite 311. Yeah, you album. gotta love That's, them all, right? Th those They're are all our your children. children. <laughs> yeah. You know? Uh, so I'm gonna pass on that question. Yeah, that cool. was hard. Well, which is your favorite album of your own? Is it always the newest one? <laughs> I mean, I think that Evolver mm. is an underrated album. I think that song didn't get appreciated for mm. the breakthrough that, that it was. I mean, the song Creatures for a While is on there, and, and that has, is a, a staple of our live show, but there's so many other cool songs on there that mm -hmm. um, maybe got underappreciated. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the live show, um, uh, do you have any weird pre-performance rituals that you guys do? It's a lot of yoga. Yeah, yeah everyone's it's stretching. a lot of stretching. Because <laughs> um, you're going to do 40 dates all summer long. We're going to be out there yeah. on the road. Yeah. yeah. How do you stay in shape? You do have to think of it as kind of being an athlete. Like right now, we're we're in training, meaning like we were just having band practice today, mm -hmm. and also for me, jumping around on stage a lot, I, I need to do my cardio and just be like ready. You, your your voice is a muscle. You you can, you could never just hit a tour cold and expect to not have like inflammation and yeah. you know bumming. So. Uh, you, you, you got to do your preparation mm -hmm. and then you know in the early days when you we were first on tour when we were like 23 it could be a non-stop party like I can't even believe like <laughs> how little sleep we got yeah. and how active and how much substances we ingested but now it's like your 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 life is for the show so yeah. it's it's rest it's eating good it's exercise mm -hmm. you know what I mean like you you got to be you got to take it seriously because nice. things change. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Cool. So Ron Ivan Jack wants Sweet to know. Ron. We love Ron. He wants to know, uh, what are your newest and most favorite pedals at the moment? I got to give a shout out to this Friedman uh, Brown Eye Overdrive. It's the newest pedal I've played through. Is that okay to say that? Oh, yeah. Okay. Just plugged it I mean, in for the first time? Did Guitar Center yeah. let me borrow it. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty sweet. If you guys want to buy one, come it in and get great. it. It sounds great. It does sure, sound I'm good. I'm sure going to let you take it home, right, yeah. guys? I mean, <laughs> yeah, because I love this deluxe amp, too. <laughs> and a guitar like Nick's would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> a Sinister Gates guitar mm -hmm. is pretty sweet. Um, Mr. Um, PlayStation did manage to sneak into the lightning round again. Uh, nice. Who do you think will win the NBA Finals? I don't want to say because like all you're doing is pissing off about half the yeah, fan base. Yeah, <laughs> that's so true. I, yeah, yeah. I had commented before, and people were like, "How could you do that? Yeah. This town loves you so much, and you're like the other guy." <laughs> so yeah. and we do love Cleveland, the city. There's a lot of good people, well, we friends live in the there. Golden State. Yeah. So yeah, 
May the best team win. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure the best that, team will that win. That is a wonderful sentiment for us to go out on. You guys are going to play us out with... Uh, a little too push. late. Too late. All right. Cool. Yes. Thank you, everybody, for joining in. Tim and Nick at 311, thank you so much. Too late.